If you don't stay down and you never quit, come on over here and sit on the far end of the bench. Man, there's just some things that feel right. Uh, we needed the break. We needed the time off. It was a little bit longer than both of us anticipated, but it's back. 172 Far End of the Bench podcast post Super Bowl and our live shows for the NFL playoffs. Obviously, that one didn't turn out the way either of us wanted. Well, I mean, half. I, I won the pickums. I won the pickums. Congratulations, Jimmy. Welcome oh, back. Good to be back. I'm happy to be back. A I can long, be a long, football long guy now. Weeks, long couple weeks, but yeah. I'm glad you're able to get that win. It was it was necessary. Um, we'll we're gonna kind of wrap that up. We're gonna talk some NFL still because now combine has started. We waited long enough that the combine actually has already they, they've weighed in and started their medicals and the team meetings. So workouts will start a little bit later on this week. Uh, you just got back from the champ series, plus you've been doing some other stuff, uh, coaching some youth lacrosse. So now we got two coaches on the show, um, and we got bracketology, college basketball. Uh, I think that we're probably going to talk NCAA football and, you know, whatever else comes up because it's been a while. Uh, we, we finally get to kind of, you know, this, it's fun to have the time off. It's nice to have the time off, especially, I don't know about you, but like after the seasons, I need like two weeks to fully reset. Well, it, even just coaching, I'm like, uh, I don't know what it is, but I, no, I will it, die. Uh, I will die for like two weeks afterwards. And then after that, I'm good. I'm all fine. It's absolutely necessary to take a little mini break. And then, like you said, this is the time of the year where everything is going to start to pick up. Super Bowl is just the beginning of it. NFL playoffs is the beginning of, of quote unquote, busy season. It's if, uh, Those who work in county know what I'm talking about. This is our busy season where we have everything going on. So it was much, much needed before we, we kick it up into high gear, um, especially with the NFL playoffs being the beginning of it. So it was, it was very, very important to get that little mental health and mental and, and that physical break. Although I didn't really have a break, but you know what I mean? <laughs> it, it wasn't necessarily a break. I totally get what you mean. Cause I was at the state tournament while you were at the champ series. Uh, and now it's all over. And now we just get to kind of kick back, relax. I'm w- taking up TV again. Uh, have you watched that new avatar series yet on Netflix? I have not. No, okay. I, have, it's, I, I don't, I'm not going to tell you one way or the other because it may be, it may be good or bad to you. I will say that it's at least faithful to the cartoon. It's pretty much all, like watching that, the that, same exact show. That's all I need to hear to, to get me hooked because the, the animated show when I was little was one of my favorite shows. Yeah, no, I've been really enjoying it. It's been good so far. The acting is what it is. They're 12 year old kids. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not coming into this expecting great acting. I want to see people boo shit with their hands. Like, and, and I will tell you the one thing that I will say, and this will be like my tease for everybody. If you haven't watched it yet, I'm not going to talk about it. Maybe now that the season's over, I might start up Sunday scaries and be able to talk about it a little bit more. The firebenders in the animated series, like totally took out the level of violence and danger because when they show people getting taken down by the fire nation in this live action series, and you see the burns, like it's third degree burns. That's basically what these people are able to do with their hands. You're like, Ooh, yikes. Um, that, this, that Southern Air Temple was not a fun time to be at for the, the last little bit before the Fire Nation raid. I was like, Jesus Christ, this is, what are we doing here? Is this a kid's show still? Uh, be sure to follow at FEOTB pod. Like I said, this is episode 172. Um, I guess let's just get it out of the way. We, we haven't been here since Super Bowl 58. And uh, the Kansas City Chiefs win three out of five in overtime, 25-22. I guess the main thing. Because the, the game's taken place already. We've had the time to break down where things went wrong, how the 49ers, you know, gave it away again. But the what did you think of just the overtime rules? Did you enjoy – do you think that's best overtime rules moving forward? Should that be adopted for regular season, or is this going to be just a postseason thing? It's not the best overtime rules. We all know what the best overtime rules are. I don't even need to go on that tangent, especially with college football and how great they do it. But, look, it, it, it is beneficial um, that both teams can touch the ball because, obviously, <clears throat> the last couple of years we saw a lot of big-time games go to overtime where it was decided with the first team touching the ball, right? And when you have the level of quarterbacks these guys are at right now and some of these guys in this league, it's, it's almost – writing your deathbed as, as I like to say it's almost that bad and and it's it's 
I don't hate it. I don't hate that both teams touch the ball. I just don't think it's the best rules. It really isn't, and and it's way better than everything that that's happened since since we adopted the the non um, both teams possibly get a chance to stop, touch the ball. Like the whole field goal thing, get the ball back. That shit was weird. Now just clear cut. Well, both teams touch the ball. Go from there, and and it's crazy because. You should, you saw the the um, not the inaccuracy, but the the, um, the the unfamiliarity with the whole situation right off the bat. Right, it's the first Super Bowl that's ever been played with these rules. I don't think there was an overtime game in this year's playoffs, so it was the first one up until that point that was played like this. And in all in all honesty, when you when you when you go into overtime, the last fifteen years, twenty years, hell, the last fifty years, you want the ball. <laughs> You want the ball, right? You want the ball. You get a chance to go down and score. But if you look at the history of college football and 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 overtime and everything, you more than likely you win the toss. You're gonna, you're picking the end zone. You're picking to go second. You're picking uh, uh, to to let them show you what you can do, so you can either answer or steal the deal. And it is. And like I said, I don't I don't think Fred Warner knew. Obviously, I don't, I don't know if Kyle Shanahan. Kyle Shanahan should have known. If he didn't, then that's a major problem. Um, I, look, I, I it, it's it's unfortunate that that it that the 49ers decided the way they did, and all the things that came out after about them not knowing the rules came out because that's terrible. It's something that's things you need to know specifically with as many playoff games that have been during the regular season and postseason. So. It's so unfortunate. Was it the reason they lost? No. You still have to stop a team. You still, have, you still had, you still had, you had as many chances to score as they did. Um, you, you had as many chances to win that game as, as they did. It's not the end all be all of why you lost Super Bowl, but it absolutely is one of the many reasons why the Chiefs are ho- ho- hoisted the Lombardi Trophy and you didn't. I think that you can use it both ways, and I've been able to think about it a little bit more. I didn't say this right right after on talking the Gridiron when we were ra- wrapping up for the season. If you want the ball still, you can still take the ball. Oh. You just got to have the same exact mindset because what what the 49ers, I guess, and what the people, what we all didn't realize is that when, if you kick a field goal, then the other team knows that it's four down territory all the way down the field. Well, I guess if you're going to take the football, you got to make it four down territory going all the way down the field and then hope your defense can make a stop. That That is a strategy that you can implement, but the strategy – I would much rather take the chief side of that coin. I would do that seven times out of 10. It's very rare circumstances that I would take the ball in overtime now. And I do agree with you. I think that the chiefs were at least the more prepared team in the situation because we, we know what ended up happening. That play that they ran, it's, it's just, it's inevitable because I didn't, honestly, if you think about that game, Patrick Mahomes threw for 300 yards. When, when did he do that? There's like four passes because the, the 49ers defense shut them down in the first half, except for very, two very plays. Quiet. It was very quiet. It was the last couple drives, obviously the whole the overtime drive and the drive to tie the game back up. It was it was the last couple where he picked up most of those. And like I said, it's unfortunate that the, the way they went with that, but you have to realize who you're playing to. Like like it's pat it's literally the best player in football right now. That on the other sideline that you're giving the ball to, knowing he knows what he needs to do to win the Super Bowl. Right, it, it, there's a handful of guys in the history of the game that you can point out in postseason play that if you tell them what they need to do, they're going to do it. It's Patrick Mahomes, Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, and probably a couple old ones that I've never watched. So Joe, uh, I'm, I'm just saying he hasn't won a Super Bowl, know, but I'm just saying guys that guys that have won Super Bowls that have been there. Like it's 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 there's a handful of guys that that if you put the Super Bowl in the line, have done it, and know and, and, and know exactly what they need to do. And it's it's even scarier. And look, maybe it was Fred Warner having faith in his defense. Maybe it was the ADSC of, of going second. But if you're the, if you're the Chiefs, like, you would have much rather gone second. Much rather gone second. Do you Go ahead, stock, Purdy. Do you put you stock know? in the whole saving because the defense was out on the field. But my whole no, argument was you're professional no, athletes. It's been no, about no. 10 minutes. You get the coin toss. Like you should be – if you're in shape for the Super Bowl, you should be able to go back out there, even if you did just have a twelve. The amount of TV, the amount of TV timeouts, the amount of commercial breaks, the amount of the amount of time in between the last. Snap Usher sure gave you a thirty-five minute performance of a lifetime. Like you, you have all day. There's, there's literally no excuses whatsoever of being like, yo, we want the defense to go out second. No, it has nothing to do with it. Coach, it, it I just I mean, don't think I, I don't think I could do this. 
I don't, and look, get your ass look, on the bench. And look, like I said, Patrick Mahomes was the X factor there. And and like I said, I don't care what he did the whole entire game. There is not another quarterback in the National Football League right now that I would trust more with the ball in his hands to go win me a football game than Patrick Mahomes. Not a single one. And there's not there's not a single one that I'd have a conversation with. Not Allen, not Burrow, not Hertz, not not you name it. Insert here. I would not take them over Patrick Mahomes and not even be a question. And look, it's it's unfortunate for the 49ers because your defense was one of your backbones for most of the year. You have a strong pass rush, but in the playoffs you felt you fell apart. The defense was wearing on you. That's why you got the the deficit in the NFC Championship. That's why you were you were down in, a, in against the. Uh, or in the in the first round or second round against Packers, like there was there was miscues all over on the defense side of the football. <laughs> it's really a big loss of showing big loss of of Miko Ryan's, who was the who was the, the the main stable on that defense for the last four or five years, and and was the reason why they were so damn good. And you brought brought in a new coordinator, and knew everything, and. They just weren't ready. They were not ready for the big time. And when your offense finally was clicking on all cylinders, your defense didn't show up when it needed to. No, I think that this is a detriment for <laughs> – it's a great season. I don't want to sit here and, and I'm not going to – I know that I had beef with 49ers fans and Tyler all season. I'm not going to sit here and say that I wasn't impressed. It's damn impressive to go NFC Championship, Super Bowl, back-to-back. But now I think that you're going to have to come to grips with the fact that next year may be a little bit lean, just if nothing else, because you guys have played, I don't know, there's 17 games in a regular season now. So over two years you play, and I'm not good at math, 35 games plus four postseason games every year, plus now the Super Bowl, and you're playing for longer periods of time. I, I think that the 49ers next season, we're fine. this is the year that is going to catch up to them. We're going to see what happened to Philadelphia. This year happened to San Francisco, where they may look good for the first part of the year just because they're a championship-level team. Back-to-back NFC championships and the Super Bowl appearance are great. I mean, I'm, I'm saying that because you, you can see the logo on my forehead and, you, and understand why I'm saying that. But it's going to be tough for them. I, I I saw it this year. I think that next year it's going to be the 49ers' turn to be down and out because just that's a lot of football. Like your body's worn down. And that clock is ticking, right? It, it, it ticked for you. Bur- you have to pay Burrow. I'm already, some, I'm, yeah, I'm already day, pretty much out already, of the window. You're already losing. You're already losing guys left and right. You're not going to be able to, to keep all these Christian McCaffrey, Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, George Kittle likes when you can't play your quarterback $750,000 a year. Right? It's going to come back to bite you if you don't win in this window. And Purdy has shown that he's your, he's your quarterback. He's showing that he's your quarterback. There's zero denying it anymore. But your quarterback is going to have to get a payday. And and, and 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 if you can't win in this small little window you have while he's still on this uh, uh, rookie contract, I think it's one more year's left, it, it's it's going to come back to bite you in the ass. Because, like I said, all that talent is going to is going to be walking, very walking very quickly. Debo's deal is coming up. Uh, you have you have the likes of uh, Trent Williams' deal coming up. Chris McCaffrey j- just signed a long deal. His contract's going to bite up a lot of money. Are you coming up? Um, you're going to lose Chase Young. You're going to have to pay Nick Bosa. It's a lot of names. A lot of names that did not get you this far. Um, you do not you do not get this far without them. That you're going to have to say see ya and hope that you draft well enough. Which you have. You actually you absolutely have drafted well enough. Uh, but you have to continue to do it because, like I said. You're not going to be able to pay Brock Purdy seven hundred fifty thousand dollars over the next eight, six, eight to ten years if he is your franchise quarterback. They, this is it's impressive. And now I guess the last thing that we'll say about these two teams before we start talking about our own two teams, uh, likelihood chances that you give the Chiefs the ability to three peat. Very, very high. They are the overwhelming favorites. They show that the regular season didn't fucking matter. If they win their division and they host at least one playoff game, like, like what did I, what did I say? And like everyone else say, oh, wait till they play on the road. Well, they played on the road and they literally show beat up everybody else still. So it, it doesn't look. They're going to win the division next year unless a miraculous effort from the Chargers after a terrible year, or a miraculous effort by the Raiders, or a fucking heroic effort from the Broncos. To throw on them they're going to win their division meaning they're going to at least hoist one uh playoff game and that's all and really that's all they need 
it's really all they need because when when push comes to shove, there's not many other people that you can trust more than 15 to 87 connection. Um, Taylor Swift or no Taylor Swift, then 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 what the Chiefs have. And like I said, they are they have retooled. They're going to continue to retool. They're going to be in the market for a receiver this offseason. And I've seen some reports of Calvin Ridley. Um, I've seen some reports of 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 some Michael Thomases out there, guys, guys who are basically ring chasing um, and who, who don't really need the money anymore, and they can go be number one, number two guys in Kansas City on the receiving end. Obviously, they're not number one, two, number two receivers because, like I said, Kadarius Tony had that op- had that opportunity, and he fucking wasted it more than anyone. And they still won. They still won. Kadarius Tony was it was inactive. And they still won. That was the number one supposed to be the number one receiver going into the season. Obviously, Rasheed Rice changed everything, and he was a much better number one this year for them. But like I said, they can, they can only get better. They can only get better, and that's the scariest part. Obviously, Chris Jones being a free agent is going to be huge, huge, huge. Uh, he was a free agent at the beginning of last season. I know, I know, but it's the whole franchise tag thing. I, look, I, 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 I think he'll still return. I'd be very, very surprised if he didn't return. Um, but like I said, money talks. And after you've won three Super Bowls now, I mean, would you not go try to go get your payday since you are one of the best interior defense line, if not the best, up there with Aaron Donald? Like it, it's one A, one B. Like like it's it's the money. And look, I I don't know if you have the money for it. It may be a whole thing where he goes to fucking Carolina and gets paid. He may go to, he may go to Washington and get paid where they have cap space because at this point, like I said, he's. He's one of the two best defense linemen in football, and and he he deserves that payday. And, and it's going to come down to whether he wants to keep winning, and just love living in Kansas City, which not very like to do, like to do, or go get paid and maybe live and live and play in warmer weather. Yeah, we're gonna to get to you, St. Louis. I'm sure when we talk about hockey, because you're you're still an embarrassment to. Uh, um, the, the sport. And I know it's not technically the same. Here's the bad thing. I didn't tell you this in March. I'm going to have to go out to Kansas city for a wedding. And they're going to be all right. I'm going to see so much new super bowl gear. It's going to just, it's going to make me want to vomit because I'm sure I know what, I know how you feel about making those, that statement on, on your show. Here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen, you better screen grab that because the fact that he just gave them the highest odds to go three Pete, I mean, his team was one of the teams that could have. If, if TD doesn't get hurt, if Elway doesn't retire after 33, <laughs> they could have gone back in 34 for Super Bowl 34. I agree that I think they have a good chance, but honestly, I think they're going to probably whip Peter out this year too. I I know everybody said uh, that. Jimmy, I would love it more than anyone. You and I, I would love you would. it more than anyone. Well, I, I'm hoping well, I, for I it. I still think they could but, win. Uh, I still think because the division ended up sucking – you know what? Last year, ass, absolute ass, and it's going. I to think that they can year. still win the division, being that bad. But it may be a year where you win the division at nine and seven instead of winning the division at eleven and four, or whatever it is. Now. Look, it, it's 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 the boogeyman. I I will I will. It's going to be very very difficult to see the Chiefs the not boogeyman. get double digits wins and and believe that they won't at least get the ten wins. Is all I'm going to say. Yeah. I'd be very very surprised if they did they did not get the ten. Is all I'm gonna say because, like I said, you six games are or are, are against these ass teams in your division, and you just gotta win four more. Yeah, this this team will be just fine. I'm not even worried if Chris Jones walks. They'll find Carl Aftis will be the fucking next next fucking TJ Watt, I guess, or whatever, and they'll they'll just retool because of how good that fucking shitty ass organization is. John Wheat is a man of will. Your fucking strength. He's not going to. I've been watching those two. You'd be proud of me. I watched one, and I'm in. I'm. I've already gone through two up until the point where uh, he went through the car depot. Um, I think that it, here's an interesting comparison for you, and it, and it, I got it from 104.3, our local sports station here. Are the Nuggets the Kansas City Chiefs? No, don't you ever put that in our. Uh, I, just, no, just, no. just let me, no, let me, no, let me no. explain. Let me explain. We. They have the championship pedigree now. They don't necessarily have to kill themselves in the regular season to make sure that they have the one seed because everybody has faith in them to be able to win wherever they are. They have the best player, the most unstoppable player at his position, being able to generate as much offense as he's able to generate. There's more similarities than I think that anybody would like to admit if you're a fan of either team. I don't think the Chiefs want to be compared to the Nuggets, and I don't think the Nuggets want to be compared to the Chiefs. But as I'm sitting here, I can see the parallels. I can see where people are pulling this from. 
We've also look. We've also only won one championship in our entire history. So and we I are not in the second and, this year. And, and, and I hope so. I very and I and I think we will after what what's happened transpired the last couple of games since the All Star break. But I am not going to put us on that pedestal at all yet, and neither do I want to. I look. I I've said it. I've said it night in night day out. I don't want to be the Warriors. I don't want to be the Patriots. I don't want to be the Chiefs. I don't want to be the fucking Heat. I want to be the San Antonio Spurs. Okay, that's plain and simple. Where you're just fucking good and you're fucking quiet, and you just do it the right way, and nobody can figure you out year in, year out, and that's what I'm hoping for. I hope Tim Dun- Nicole Jokic is Tim Duncan. I hope Jamal Murray is Tony Parker. I hope we just fucking continue to beat everybody's ass in the playoffs because everybody sleeps on us every year. That's what I hope for. Not, like I said, I, look, the Chiefs are flashy. Travis Kelsey flashy. Patrick Mahomes flashy. There's nothing flashy about the Nuggets. That's where I'll say, and like I said, we've also only won one championship, so I would – I, look, I think the Chiefs are more the Golden State Warriors than than than, than what we are because Warriors having Steph Curry be, being that all world type player and, and just the flashiness and the threes and the trick plays of the Chiefs run, I think that's a much much better comparison than the Nuggets. I I'll just put that out. I I think it's fair. Um, looking at our teams now for the off season, I have a Tankathon pulled up. So if you want to do your own mock draft, I would recommend using it. Um, but this is the draft order that we have so far. Chicago, uh, Washington, New England, Arizona, L.A., New York, Tennessee, Atlanta, Chicago again. So the Giants are at six after the Jet, the Chargers, and then the Jets are number 10. Your Broncos sit at number 12, right in the middle of the first little group of, grouping of teams. My Bengals sit at pick number 18, Nico, the damn last pick before the stupid-ass playoff teams. This is gonna. This draft is gonna suck, and you know why that sucks this year is because I think Brock Bowers has a chance to goddamn fall. And wouldn't that be great to put Brock Bowers with Joe Burrow? I look if Brock, I will buy you fucking a, a bottle of fucking tequila. If Brock Bowers falls past fucking twelve. He's not falling past saying. twelve. He's Somebody not. is going to be. I don't think he falls past six. I think if I, he's there yeah. at six, Harbaugh's gonna take him. That's, yeah, I, I, I would. I think that's a very, very strong possibility unless they go receiver. Um, but I, Brock Bowers will not be a fucking non-lottery pick, quote unquote. He will be a top ten draft pick at least. I, <laughs> if not I top think five. it's it's fair. I don't disagree with you. Uh, obviously, biggest story is what Chicago going to do with that number one overall pick. Uh, seems to be like they're showing their hand. We know that they're probably moving on from Fields. We know that Fields probably wants to move on from Chicago. It's probably time at this point. Now the smoke screen is which quarterback do they favor because everybody's done everything to try and tear Caleb Williams down. This show kind of included. I just don't think that he's going to be as successful as maybe I thought he once was. Not saying that he's not talented. Some people are doing what they can to build Drake May up. All I'm going to say is what happened the last time a North Carolina quarterback who started for a couple seasons was drafted high in the first round. Might be too soon, Chicago fans. I'm just going to put it out there. Drake may might not be the answer. And uh, D- Jaden Daniels, uh, I've heard really bad things about Michael Penix. Um, JJ McCarthy might be the only one that I really have faith in. Of these quarterbacks, don't, 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 don't. I know, I know which way you're going. I know which way you're going about this. Everybody but... says you're going to draft the quarterback, so let's just get it out of the way. We're, we're, we're going to play this game. I texted you well, that we're going to play before, this game before, earlier before we, today. Before we start that, I will say there are some reports that are saying Justin Fields could stay still, but uh, the Bears would be absolutely idiotic to to either if they are going to move on from Justin Fields, to take anybody happen. but Caleb Williams. If they move on, from, they, they, like I said, Drake May is not worth the project. You might as well keep the project you already have. Caleb Williams' projections are higher than him, are higher than Justin Fields. And that's the only person, only quarterback that, that you should draft if, you, if, if you're if you going to get rid of Fields, plain and simple. Because right now, Fields is way better than Drake May will be. And right now, he's way better than what Jaden Daniels will be, possibly, obviously, right now. And you, you get a chance of him coaching him for a couple more years and having him in the system. It's way, way better option. But if you're going to go after and take a big swing on a big talent, it's only Caleb Williams. That's the only answer you have. Plain and simple. It's either just Caleb Williams is your starting quarterback week one, or it's Justin Fields. It's not, it's not fucking Drake May. If it's Jaden Daniels, the Bears get ready to start learning fucking Chinese because your, your roster is going to get transported into England or China as, as, as the next destination because you're, you're going to lose the city because it's it's going to be that bad. It's going to be that bad. So I'll put that out. McCarthy. 
they draft JJ McCarthy first overall. Oh my god! I, I, didn't, I, I didn't think about it. I remember a world where Baker Mayfield going number one overall was absolutely asinine. But that quarterback class was not not at all. He like, wasn't the best quarterback of. No, he class. wasn't. But it wasn't Caleb Williams number one. I, I forgot who was. I don't. I know. I know. Uh, uh, Lamar was in that class. I was Darnold's was class. class. Darnold's class. That, that class. Was Josh Rosen. Special. Josh friggin' Rosen. I know I Lamar the too, with and fucking Josh Allen. They that was a hell of a quarterback class. It's funny that Baker went over number one. It's funny because Baker went as far as any of those quarterbacks. Actually, Lamar went one more round, but he, he's he's been just as far as anyone in that draft class. Funny though, but yeah. it's obviously been different circumstances. But I, I I just think it'd be absolutely blasphemous. If, if the, I think Bears fans may fucking go t- tear down Ryan Poles' office if they trade Justin Fields and draft Drake May or Jane Day. Playing stuff because I think that they've sold themselves with Caleb Williams at this point, but you cannot sit here and sell Drake May and 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 uh Jane Daniels to your fan base, plain and simple, and hope that they renew their tickets. Plain and simple, this is not gonna happen. Uh, I think the Bears front office feels like they could sell ketchup, a ketchup popsicle to a woman wearing white gloves. I think that's they believe that they're Tommy Boy, and I I, I think that they might be closer to that than they they actually know. Um, I'm going to talk about, we said we're going to do this. I texted you, we're going to do this for the Broncos. Cause if you haven't been living in Denver, Russell Wilson did put that giant ass house with the 15 bathrooms on the market. So either he's downsizing because everything, he just went on Brandon Marshall's podcast and said that he wants to stay in Denver. He wants to win here. I, I he doesn't want to stay here unless Sean Payton's not here. So let's just, let, let's not get it twisted. I said we're gonna. I'm gonna give you a quarterback because I think quarterback's gonna be something that they have to address. I don't know how they're going to address it. There's a couple different options. No one does. There's no free one does. agency. There's the draft. Like we're gonna talk about, but I'm gonna give you certain scenarios, and I and you're gonna tell me what you feel as a Denver Broncos fan. I have a perfect have scenario. I have team. a perfect scenario that I'll tell you after because I don't think it'll be in this mix, but it, it's very, it's pretty much impossible that it happens. So I'll let you go ahead. These are some of the things that I've been hearing. A, nothing changes. He's still on the roster. We end up maybe drafting a guy in the third round or just keeping Jared Stidham. But he stays on the roster for this one more season because then you can dole out his cap hit over two years. Cap already went up $30 million this year anyway, so it wouldn't even necessarily hurt you that bad to cut him this year. But you just everything stands pat, and we try it again. That'd let's, be great. Let's see if this that, relationship works. That'd be great, but it's just we are just so far past that. It's not even. There's no going back. Like I would love that. I would love to not fucking just pay a quarterback to go play for another team. I would and possibly be the Raiders too. Like I would love that, but it's just not. It, look, the relationship between him, management, and him, and honestly, the fan base is just so far gone that it's just not. It's just not going to happen. I, I would be. Absolutely appalled if the Broncos decided that Russell Wilson's the quarterback next year. Is all I'm gonna say. I'd be very, very appalled. It would be so. And, wild. I, and, and it's and it's not necessarily happy or mad. It's more like, what the fuck are we doing? Yeah, bro, <laughs> it's like the guy. The in... It was like, what the fuck was the reason for benching him the last two games? What the fuck yeah. was the reason for doing any of this shit? It was. It would just be like, are you kidding me? Like, all right, fucking stupid, idiot, idiocy. It's... It's the trashy TV uh, outcome because it's the guy that you watched, like, you know this relationship is terrible. And both of them won out so badly. But they just somehow find their way back. And you're like, what? Why? Just, like, Come on, you guys stop. would be happier. You guys have acknowledged that you're not happy with each other. You would be happier other places. You're like, yeah, but I'm just going to stay. I, she already has a key to the house. I already know her bank account password. It's good. We're just going to stay where we are. Uh, okay. Look, you I, cannot, it'd be very, it'd be, I'd, that'd be the most difficult sell to your fan base. Seriously, that'd be the most difficult sell to your fan base. I don't, after, there's a big contingent of fans off. that actually prefer Russ over Sean. Like, be, I've heard people say that they think Sean sabotaged Russ, and Russ deserves actually a fair shot where they should just get get Sean Payton the hell out of here. I, I, look, I, I don't know anymore. I really don't know anymore. And I'm, and look, I, Russell Wilson has had fucking 30 games to, to, to show me otherwise. Sean Payton has given me 16 games, and it's, and he went on to beat the Chiefs this year. Someone, the last four coaches have not. So for those that are saying Russell Wilson over Sean Payton, what has Russ done? And look, he was decent last year, but I'm not paying him 800 million whatever fucking dollars to be decent. <laughs> I'm paying him to be the second best quarterback in your division, competing with Patrick Mahomes, and he's not even close to doing that. 
So so that's why that's why I think it's absolutely blasphemy for, for fans to be on the, the, the Russell Wilson side because like I said, Sean Payton, I'm not oh, look he's not I'm not I'm not calling him the God's gift to fucking coaching. But he's given me 16 games where we competed for the playoffs in the last fucking four weeks. We look, it was very small chance we were gonna make it. Very small. But we still had like a little thought, be like, oh well, we did this, did that. We could still have a small chance. So Russell Wilson has given me 30 games of absolute bullshit. Bullshit. And I'm not paying him to fucking sit there and kiss babies. I'm not paying $800 million for the press. So I don't care how nice of a guy he is. I'm not doing that. I'm going to go with the coach that beat the Chiefs for the first time since Peyton Manning was wearing orange and navy blue. Like, come on. Relax. Okay. Uh, next option at – they, I don't think that they're going to get a quarterback they want at 12. I don't see them moving up because they have so much work to do in this draft. Because I don't know if you saw, but a couple of weeks ago, they were voted the worst draft class of last season. So I'm I, think they're gonna, yeah, I know they were just that bad. <laughs> they're they're going to have to actually hit on this. So I don't see them moving up. I honestly see them maybe trading back. And when they trade back, that's where maybe you get a J.J. McCarthy in the second round. Maybe it's a Lamar uh, situation and you put yourself back up at the end of round one and, and hopefully get that guy. Um, say so, it, so say it's J.J. McCarthy. And it's not one I'm, of the high-profile quarterbacks. I am going to nix everything you just said because all the reports are saying J.J. McCarthy is a top-ten pick. They, they, if he's yeah. there, I know – look, I'm not, I, I'm not I know, saying – I know, I'm not saying I know that is. it's not you. I'm, I'm not saying, saying he is. It's ridiculous. But I'm just saying that's how pe- – it is very ridiculous. But all the reports are saying that he's a top-ten pick. So that means the Broncos want McCarthy, they have to trade him. So and what? And look, that is the nightmare. Then it's Penix. Then scenario. I think Penix is the one that's left over. And that's even. I'd rather fucking throw Stidham out there and fucking throw him to Wolves. I was point. gonna say. I don't know. Okay. Uh, look, look. If Sean Payton is in love with JJ McCarthy, I would go look at the eighth overall pick and maybe the seventh pick, not top five, because you're not gonna get that far up. You are not look unless Jane Daniels for whatever reason falls, for whatever reason falls to the seventh or eighth pick. That's when you fucking go send it. And that's where you're like, you know what? We can go get this guy. But then you also remember uh, Sean Payton has a way of how he wants his quarterback to play. And if Jane Daniels is that great of talent, he doesn't fit that mold. There's only one quarterback, arguably two, with Drake May, that can fit that mold. And it's J.J. McCarthy. So, look, they met as we're recording this Tuesday night. They met tonight. And who knows what that thoughts will be. I... I don't know what to think anymore, Jimmy. I really have no idea what to think anymore. I have convinced myself that J.J. McCarthy is going to be the quarterback and we're going to fucking suck, okay? Plain and simple. Because at this point, if you're going to cut Russell Wilson, your only option is to draft a quarterback. Your only option. Your only option. Uh, I mean, because, bring because in, looks, you can bring in Sam Darnold because Darnold's going to be – it's not going to be as cheap as drafting a quarterback, but that's that's the guy that's been attached. And and he did get a lot of football rehab. And, and he's – here's – him and Zach Wilson being drafted into that Jets organization when they were throwing them, is, throwing them. is the worst thing that could throwing have ever happened to them. And and there's been a lot of really good reports coming out of San Francisco where Darnold was just the backup. Like this guy is, has gone through the necessary rehab steps. And, and damn it, you might just need a quarterback for one more season. Like get yourself to the following year's draft because if you do cut Russ this year, next season is when you have the ability to actually go out and do some things. If you start getting those – you have to get good players in this year's draft. You got to make sure that you bring in the right culture pieces, whatever Sean Payton wants in free agency, because it's going to be a couple of lean. It's, it's going to be some lean years at the at the Denver Broncos Christmas. And, but, and look, but if you get through it, you're you put yourself in a really good spot. And look, the wor- the the worst part is like like you said. Look, if you want to trade up, with what are you going to trade? Because you already have the lowest amount of draft picks possible. You yeah, have, I believe, I believe it's six, maybe it's five. I'm not exactly sure. Draft picks this upcoming year. Obviously, the 12th. You, look, you draft 12th overall, and then you don't draft till the, the midway through the second day. Your next pick isn't, isn't, isn't until like the fourth. I believe they the have picked 12, league. 76, yeah, it's, 122 it's from Miami, 144 from the Jets, 146, and then they have 237 from it, Los it, Angeles. It is an absolute fucking – ways, ways away to go. And look, in my ideal situation, I don't know if you have any other situations to, to give me, but uh, my no, ideal my, last one. my ideal situation would be that Russ, you suck it up and you throw Russ out there one more year and you go draft Dallas Turner, the Alabama edge rusher, or you go draft Alu Fashanu, I think is his name, the, 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 the UCLA edge rusher. 
Oh, those two guys could be are, are in a normal in a normal draft year with not this many quarterbacks, not this much talent in the receiver position would be top five picks. If those two fall to twelve, they are automatic fucking locks. Because look, there's two things you need. There's two things you need to be a good team. A guy that can throw the ball and a guy that can go rush the guy throwing the ball. Play simple to be a decent team. And we don't have either of them. So you, if you, you, have, you may be onto something here because I'm looking at Daniel Jeremiah's latest mock draft and they have them taking – it's a guy named Jared Verse from Florida State, but it's an edge rusher. I know it is because because our edge rushers right now are fucking Baron Browning and, and Nick Not Benito. Good. Okay, it's ass. It's cheeks, Jimmy. We went from Bradley Chubb and Von Miller last at the start of last season. Now, I know that Von wasn't here, but it's it's been a far it's a far cry from where we were. It's a very very far cry. So like I said, I I in my ideal situation is as Russell Wilson gets fucking grows up, and and Sean Payton grows up and says, you know what. You don't want to really play anywhere else. There's not very many teams that won't. We'll make you the starting quarterback. We'll throw you out there. You get one more chance, and you cut him next year. You draft the quarterback in the fucking fifth or sixth round, possibly. God, I hate myself for saying this, and I really, really hate myself for saying this. Possibly, maybe you're Spencer Rattler in the fucking sixth round. If you fucking feel like it, oh and, and 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 then you and then you see what Russ gives you this year. Plain and simple. You draft an edge rusher, make that guy your be your edge piece with with PS2, and then you are set on the defensive side of football, right? You are set. You have an edge rusher, you have a number one corner. Obviously, who knows what the edge rushers will look like years from down the road, but you need to have somebody. You need to have somebody. And and and, and the quarterback position right now is an absolute lost cause. And I am not willing. And I, look, I don't know, if, and that's what the Broncos need to realize too, is if when you go in this draft, is court is your team Good enough right now where you are a quarterback away from winning, getting to the playoffs. No. Exactly. You're not. You're not. So don't trade up to go get him because outside of the big three, there isn't a quarterback that you should draft where you're no, at. And, and you need to – you're going to need – you're cutting <laughs> – you're probably going to cut Tim Patrick. You're going to probably cut a little bit more money away from your receiver. You can, I, would, I would see who you can get for fucking Jerry Judy at this point. See if you can get a second-round pick so you get another pick. You're not going to keep him and make him the focal point of the offense? I would, uh, look, I, unless you unless you trade Corlin Sutton instead. But like I said, Marvin Mims could be decent. Who knows? Like, look, it, it's, 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 it, it, it's, it's already lean. Slipping. That's the crazy <laughs> thing. It's already it's really slipping. lean talent-wise, and it's going to be tough for the next couple years. Like, Colin Sutton, when healthy, is a very, very good number one receiver. He's not. Imagine if you had star. Tim Patrick for the last two years. I remember sitting there a couple years ago at Empower Field, and I was like, Tim Patrick was the only reason the Broncos were close yeah, to beating hey. Burrow and the Bengals that year. I was like, what? Why is this guy the, the issue? He shouldn't it, be the issue. It should it, be it, anybody else. A two full missed seasons. Like the, it's his his time is coming by. Unfortunately, he's he's honestly. Probably not I would no I would pick him up on a cheap veteran minimum deal. I I would love to have that guy in my organization. I know you would, but at this point, there isn't many guys I would want on this team to be in my organization because they're all fucking losers. And, and 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 the whole Broncos team right now. The whole building, whole building, top to bottom, not top to bottom, not the fucking. Uh, uh, I won't. I won't say bad things about the the uh, concierge and, and all the and all the, and all the chefs over there because they're probably very nice people. But all the other people in that building are a bunch of fucking losers, Jimmy. Okay, so the the, the culture has to change, and I get getting rid of Russ may be maybe maybe the fucking nail in the coffin of changing Spicy. everything. But we'll see, and we'll see. Like I said, I. I look. I throw up if if JJ we trade up to a fucking top five pick and go draft JJ McCarthy. I would fucking throw up. Plain and simple. And 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 I would take a long guess, a long look at at, at whether or not I want to uh, wear Broncos gear anymore in, in this in this state until things figure until things fix it. Because I will always be a Broncos fan. But I, there was points this season where I was wearing my shit. It was fun. We beat the Chiefs and we did, we, we we beat the Bills. Like it was fun. And then. Bullshit happened, and, and and this is this is why it's it's it, between us and the fucking Jets. It's one of the hardest teams to fucking root for because it's just a constant evolution of just bullshit after bullshit after bullshit. You're like, why the fuck can't you just be a normal team? Why can't you just be like a fucking middle of the road Tampa Bay Buccaneers? We we're good for one year, and like you know, you can make the playoffs still like every other year because your division's ass, and you can be like, or like be around mediocrity always. No, we have to be just an athletic soccer league. Uh, we don't have to spend too much time. We can maybe even break out, out the Bengals and, and do them next week. I, it's, 
I think the only major thing that I want to mention is is Tyler Boyd. Tyler Boyd's gone. T. Higgins is staying on a franchise tag. That's I think that's 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 the way that it's working out this year. And they're gonna maybe try and work out some kind of extension for T on on this franchise tag, but it's twenty two million dollars. It's it's something that you got to do. You need is like I said. There's gonna be other spots that's gonna hurt. And that's what they yeah. have to decide is, is can you draft good enough? And then look, they have drafted good enough. They absolutely I have. hate Daniel. The, the damn mock draft I was just looking at, I hate Daniel Jeremiah for doing this to me because he put Brock Bowers to the Bengals at 18. I was like, no, I need you to be the realistic one and tell me what I'm going to have available because that's my dream. I said I want Brock Bowers. You got to tell me what offensive lineman I need to draft. How, 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 many, how, how, many, how many draft picks do you guys have? Oh, we got a ton. We got. Uh, uh, I I, I would trade up for Brock Bowers if he fell the fucking Niners. Let's see. Uh, we have I, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine picks. Jamie, I would trade up if if he fell past eight. I'd 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 get some calls. I yeah. I would. Plain simple, I would because at this point, like you, that offense would be the, one of the most exciting offenses in NFL history. And and all you need is your defense to fucking pick up the slack, and you'll be just fine because you'll have a number one tight end, a number one receiver, a very very good number two receiver that could be a number one on a lot of teams. And obviously, you have a franchise quarterback. And there's not much else you fucking need. Like really, it, it really isn't. <laughs> I, I see maybe a Polynesian tackle in our future because we passed on Sewell the last time, and there's Fontenot from. Washington is a big mamma jamma and he can pass protect, which is good because in that offense, that's all that's all we do. It's it's fun to listen to these people talk about the Bengals because they have to now and, and they have to learn the hard way that this is an air raid offense in the NFL. This is not a there's no pro style, there's no West Coast system. This is hey Joe, you're gonna loosen up that arm, big guy. You're gonna throw 75 times and hope we win. It's crazy the game is coming that way, but and, and look, the the, the, the not the World Series, Super Bowl show that running games were still important. Obviously, Pacheco had a big game. McCaffrey fumbling the ball hurt them big time. And you have to have a serviceable back, but it is, it is not it is not the focal point of your offense anymore. It's not even close. No, and, and honestly, I think we've talked about him for a couple seasons, and I said I wanted him to be more involved. I think I stand behind that he should have been more involved last year. Uh, last season might have been the last time that I see Joe Mixon in a Bengals uniform because he's now carrying a really big price tag and you can't really, you can't really win Super Bowls if you have a lot of money tied up in the running back room. No, There's certain right. rooms that you can tie your, a good number of your salary cap to like quarterback, uh, pass yeah. rusher, cornerback. Like if you have really good secondary, that's what the chiefs kind of did. But if you tie up a lot of money in the running back room, it's just a, it's just a, a, a handicap. At this point, you're putting handcuffs on yourself and tying yourself to the bed. Like, and look, it may be a situation where you get a veteran running back and throw him in there. But like I said, running backs these days last two or three years. Did you see our back? Did you see our rookie? Have you seen how fast our rookie is? You you get young running backs, then that will be perfect. Look what Pacheco was. Pacheco was a fucking fourth or fifth round back. I I was just I was staying more out of surprise for myself. He caught a screen pass last year, and against NFL dudes, I was like, wow, he's fast. That boy, he 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 fast. He he really really fast. He, he's so fast. He makes fast people look not fast. I get I get it. He's fast. Okay. Um, anything else that you want to talk about before we get into? I think that's enough football talk because now we're into postseason for the NFL. We got plenty of other things to mention. Anything else that you want to hit on before we move? Uh, look, I am fully prepared to fucking. To, to ride the J.J. McCarthy train um, going into next year and, and try to convince myself that the Broncos are going to be halfway decent next year, and it's just not going to happen. That's the sad part. Is at least you have hope. Uh, my hope is, is is weighing on the two teams that are playing d- during this current season we're in, okay, and possibly three teams because of, of my college basketball team. So, uh, look, uh, the hopes are dead, and the hopes are just don't fucking make us a, more of a laughing stock. At least compete. Just compete. That's all I ask is compete. And 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 they did some of that last year, and then they became the laughing stock. So, for the love of God, just just make me proud to be a Broncos fan, and not just want to put a paper bag over my head. I I think that's a good, and you did a good segue too, because I think it's you should probably explain who is Joe Lenardi. Uh, we've talked about bracketology before. I'm looking through because I'm trying to see if he has if he's going to make you happy or sad, or if he. Oh, okay, okay, I did find them. Yeah, I did find saying. them, but who is 
who is Joe Lenardi and what exactly are we going to be doing looking at, at this? He, he, he is he is the quote unquote Kirk Herbstreit of college basketball. He puts a bracket out there, puts the rankings out there where it's almost identical. Like 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 they look he he he's been in that room of, of people that have picked the bracket. He has he has a, he has the opportunity to been around the game for a lot a lot of years and kind of knows exactly where everything's going to fall. And uh, yeah, with with his bracketology every year, um, you kind of look at it, you kind of look at it, okay. Like it could be a 12, it could be a 13. It's how last year, how I started figuring out that GCU is going to be a 14 seed. And be like, oh shit, like there's a chance we play here. <laughs> right? Like th that's how I figured out last year. It was like, there's a small chance though, because Denver hosted a, a, a first a first round, mm -hmm. first round games here, and GCU was one of the games. So that's how you figure out where you roughly are. Sometimes his first four in, first four out can be a little iffy um because all that first four and first four out stuff really gets decided during championship week the first week of march so next week or a week and a half from now um so so that's that that's where everything will start getting decided that first four and first four out but for the most part like where your team is going to be seated that that he does a very very good job at, at, at showing you where you will be and i'm found the gc U lope so they're at this point slated to be a 12 seed and they'd be in Spokane taking on Clemson. If they were to win that, they would have the winner of Illinois and Akron. I think that would be the first two I mean, rounds. That's that's a game we could win. Just saying. That's all. It's a game we could win. We we have lost two straight, which is unfortunate because we did have the record best record in college basketball. We've lost two straight, but um, look, we we have a lot of veteran leadership, and and we, we're a team that. We gave Gonzaga a run for their money in the first half last year, okay? Let's not forget. It was Timmy time and Julian Strother over there. They still cooked us, okay? Still cooked us. But they, we gave them a run for their money. I think this team is way better than they were last year. So, like I said, 12 seed. If you're looking at a stingy 12 seed, don't. And the 12-5 is like a, it's a, it's the normal upset spot. And I I don't – I've obviously, I have – I still have a lot of catching up to do with Mark Titus and everything like that. But I wouldn't say that those matchups I just read off, I don't see any team, like, dominating. Like, the last couple of years, when, when GCU went to Iowa, you're like, oh, that was, oh, we're so it was cute. Yeah. It was a good run. That, so was, good. that was nice. Um, but now, I mean, like, those those other schools that were are possibly going to be in their quadrant, I could see them beating. Maybe oh, yeah. moving into the second round. Illinois is a very, very good team. They've been a very good team for a lot of years now, so that may be the biggest struggle. But the thing is, like, the, pro the problem with GCU right now is – we were at a point where there was a possibility that we could have been a tournament team without winning our conference. That, that's how good we were. Obviously, having one loss, having having tied for, and at one point, the best record in college basketball, it was huge, right? But you got to look, again, obviously, strength of schedule changes everything, but having only one loss, your record was huge. Now you have three or four, and things are a little iffy, right? Things are a little iffy. You still have to win your conference. That's the most important thing. It's the most important thing because that – Gets rid of any any heartache possibilities because you win, you're in. Plain and simple. And once you get to that point, and you're, if you're playing your best best basketball, you can get hot at the right time. You can beat whoever you want to. And like I said, two years ago when we were – or three years ago now, COVID year, when we were when we were playing Iowa as a 15 seed, there was fucking no hope. Uh, we, we, you and I sat there, watched the whole fucking game from my couch and 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 and, and, and fucking called it. And, and I watched Luca Garza drop fucking 40 points on our head. And I was like, well, what are you going to do? We don't have the size. We're not fast. We can't hit threes. It was, it was a lost cause. Last year with Gonzaga being there in person – Gonzaga was way, 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 way overmatched, right? You had you had a three-time player of the year or, or a nominee in Drew Timmy. You had Julian Strother. You had Emhard. You had a lot of just great young guards and guys that were just way faster and way better for that time. Now, you have a real shot to win a game. You have a real, real shot to win a game because, like I said, college basketball outside of possibly the top two, top three teams is very, very wide open and just like – just like last year, so you can you could you could be you could scare a five seed. All I'm gonna say, and and there's a chance that look, I, I can't bet currently, but you can you 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 could see yourself with a only four and a half point dog, and then you're like, holy shit, against Clemson, right? Like like we're, we're, we could we could beat these guys, and you could have that belief. And like I said, as a small school and a and a small and a, a mid major school, that's all you want. All you want is that hope. And and like I said, the last couple of years you had no hope. It was a cute story. Now you have some hope, so let's see what you can do out of it. Our other mid-major school that we're going to be paying attention to, so far it looks like they're in, Colorado State. Lonardi has them as a seven seed. 
So not only are they yeah. in the tournament, they're on the top side of their matchup. They'd be taking on Wake Forest if this prediction holds true, and they would be taking on the winner of Tennessee and Fairfield. How do you feel about the Rams? If a, how is it? How how big is it for CSU now as a program? They're in the tournament. CU's the first four out currently. If we're looking at Lonardi's um, bracketology, so what what does this mean for CSU? Is this a huge step for their program, or is this just a one once in a lifetime kind of thing that we're seeing here? I know this may sound a little weird, Jimmy. The Mountain West is one of the best conferences in college basketball this year. There is a good chance that the Mountain West has, and it's wild for me saying this, has more representatives in the NCAA March Madness than a, than a than a a conference like the SEC. I, I, yeah, I said that. SEC is very, very top-heavy. They have Alabama, they have Kentucky, they have Tennessee. Um, they have a couple schools that are, that are hovering right around there. But the Mountain West with San Diego State, with Colorado State, um, with Utah State, with a lot of these schools that have been tournament teams the past couple of years, is very, very, very good. So that does not – does not, and it's crazy because the last couple of years, Colorado State like – Colorado State was always – has always been a team where, like, you win your conference, you're in. Like, I, I, you have to. That's your only chance. And now with obviously David Roddy, I think it was two years ago, two three years ago. Now he really brought in that 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 the mentality of winning mentality. He's obviously in the NBA now. He brought in that winning mentality with his level of play, and that has skyrocketed the Rams. It has skyrocketed the Rams, and and uh, CSU is CSU can make some noise. Is all I'm going to say. This isn't just a moment in time. I I think that's big because. With Prime, like all the schools in Colorado need to take advantage of Prime being here because we all know that he's probably not going to be here for that long. It's cool to, to look at Colorado College Athletics right now. It's cool to look at CU. It's cool to look at CSU. you got to take advantage of it. I think CSU did a decent job of it last year, um, especially in the game that they had head-to-head -head with the Rocky Mountain Showdown. Now this is another step. Like You can get some big – if you win in the tournament, that does wonders for recruiting – does wonders for student numbers. It does wonders for revenue in the department. And then you can start continuing to build up the rest of your programs. This is big. It's not necessarily big like making it to the college football playoff and getting $800,000 into your athletics budget, but it is still huge. Like CSU may have a brand that wins a game in the NCAA March Madness tournament. And look, look, college basketball is is the one of the biggest and best chances for universities to get their name out there. Plain and simple. If you have a team that is in the dance, like, look, Jimmy, tell, did you know of St. Peter's before last year? No. Fighting Peacocks? Of course oh, not. No, no I, I, I couldn't tell you what state they're in right now. I, I, Le I, I'm glad you know. <laughs> Lehigh, last couple of years. Florida uh, no, Gulf Lehigh Coast. because of wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> Florida Gulf Coast, Dunk City. Uh, Florida I mean, Gulf Coast was v I mean, my, Florida the one that I always go back to is VCU. Because I watched VCU when they were the 15 seed, and I actually watched their tournament run. I was like, how is this even possible right now? VCU, Wichita State with Ron Baker yeah. and Fred Van yeah, Fleet. Like, like all these schools, and it, it is a it is a great – it is one of Marquette. the best opportunities. I had to throw that Marquette's one in there because the in-laws. Marquette is a little bit bigger. I will say that. They're, they're not as mid-major as some of the other mid-majors. Uh, actually, maybe I should leave them out with the I, – I should – I don't know how to talk about college basketball. I'm still <laughs> learning, Nico. They're, they're I, a big, I, they're, they are a big East school, Jimmy, so they do have yeah, a little bit of – that is true. <laughs> this is true. They had Dwayne Wade go there. Yep, I should yeah, just – <laughs> it's it's okay, but yeah, I it, look. It, it is one of the best opportunities possible to help enrollment, help help uh, your university get some money. And like I said, you're not going. There's look. It's one in a million that you get the 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 VCU's that you get the uh, um that, that you get these Wichita states where you get these great runs of just nobody named teams. But obviously, they don't really have that great of a chance, right? FAU last year, Florida Atlantic. Obviously, I knew that we both knew them from football, but they were. It's a final, they were a championship level team last year. They they made it to the championship game where they got their brakes blown in by a Big East school. But but that, it was it was something that has never been done before, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a great opportunity for a lot of these universities, and that's why college basketball tournament. All even add in your college wrestling as well as it adds. It, it is really the best of the best, and then there is zero zero an absolute zero denying who the best team in the country is. And wrestling is there's zero denying who the best who the best wrestler is at that weight class at the end of it, because you have to beat 
everybody. You have to go through war as opposed to the college football playoff the last couple of years where you only had to beat two teams, and those two teams were, I, I think that one's prettier than that one. No, college basketball is, you're better than me, we'll prove it. And then, and then the last couple of years, especially with Kansas and UConn dominating performances, it absolutely showed that. It's, I think it's the single elimination tournament format because even at the high school level, when I was at the state tournament, we had a dad show up during Friday and it's one of those rounds. It, it, there's certain rounds of the tournament, like in it's the Sweet 16, it's the Elite Eight, it's the Final Four for basketball. Since wrestling's double elimination, we have the blood rounds on Fridays where you're still, you have to win like three matches to get to the point where you can still place. And at the high school tournament in Ball Arena, I saw 30,000 people watching a high school wrestling match and the number one seed at one of the weight classes was winning. There was like 30 seconds left. All of a sudden he's cradled. He's on his back. The other kid pins moving on to the semifinals. And we're all just sitting there like, uh, excuse me. What, what just, and I, I think even as a guy who doesn't watch college basketball all that much, I watched the uh, um, one shining moment every year. I watch. I do watch the big games. I do watch the national championship. I do watch the final rounds, and it is exciting. I watched FAU in their uh, final four matchup last year. At, at, it, I was at a dinner for one of the school, one of my coworkers at school, and we were all sitting in the bar watching March Madness. And I don't think anybody was an FAU alumni or their San Diego State alumni at that game. We were all just sitting there. It was like we were living and dying on everything. So I think it's the it's a elimination tournament that that makes it the best best that it can be. Um, Absolutely. And look, at, and like I said, shout out to Jimmy and all the teachers out there that will be trying to fend off all of the kids from watching the games on their phones. You just got to embrace it. You just got to embrace it. And like I said, maybe it's the week that you that you uh, take off or or the, that, that is a movie week or something where, where you make, take it easy on them is all I'm going to say because, like I said, I know I did it. And, I, and I'm not going to throw out my tricks there, uh, tricks tricks and tricks and trades of, of, of how they I did it. They know kind of. They know yeah, a few. But Some of them are still not very good at it. All I'm gonna say is, is, is there are ways to to keep track of every single game that's going on, and while being at school. So all I'm gonna say, I'm not, I'm not telling you to do it, especially if you're Jimmy's students. But there are ways. <laughs> it's gonna be an interesting couple of weeks. At least there's no World Cup to deal with too, know, because we was... had World Cup plus March Madness last year, and I was like, what? Why don't? It, why doesn't everybody watch a normal sport here, like football? Can we just watch football and and that be it? Uh, last four teams, so the last eight teams in, according to Lenardi, and then we'll move on. We still have to talk abs, nuggets, and I, I want to get a recap of the champ series. We have Texas, Wake Forest, Nevada, New Mexico. The last four of those eight are Seton Hall, Virginia, Providence, and Gonzaga. Gonzaga may or may not win their conference, it sounds like, this year. St. Mary's is very, very good. That's that's the biggest thing. Is It's kind of crazy to think Gonzaga can miss the tournament if they don't win their conference. But that's how good St. Mary's and that's how bad of a year they've had. The teams that are out. So the first four out, Texas A&M, Villanova, Utah, and Colorado. Ironic because Colorado just beat Utah, upset them. Tad Boyle, you need to win. You need to continue to win, and you probably got to finish top three in your conference. It might not be fair, but that may be how, and, how you need to get into And look, And look, CU may be going to an easier conference in terms of football next year with the Big 12. The Big 12 is the premier. They're stepping ball. into a, a – Fucking dog. Chart dog, tank. Dog, char tank of teams. So you better pick it up in terms of basketball is all I'm going to You say. think they're – Baylor's going to dunk with their nuts in their face. Baylor, ta Baylor Texas, I mean Kansas, Kansas State. I mean I can go down a list of names and where CU would, would probably lose by 15 to 20 points to. And, and that's unfortunate, but that's not how, that's how bad they've been this year. Last four out, Butler, Ole Miss, Kansas State, and Iowa. So if you're a fan of those schools, you have a chance, but it's going to come down to conference championship week. I love conference tournament weeks. Like you said, I've, I have been paying attention. I've been catching up with all of my college wrestling. That's basically what I watch every single night. But conference championship tournaments, it, it's a fun time. It, it's, it's one of my favorite things to watch, no matter the sport, is who's going to win their conference, who's going to be able to take that next step and, and possibly compete to be – the best in the country. So uh, we'll keep an eye on that. I There's very little time before March Madness actually starts, and then we're going to have to be rolling and uh, doing our best to try and keep up with everything. Let's get into our it, – it's been a strange thing because we haven't been able to talk about the avalanche or hockey really, and it's been good, but it's also been bad because it's the worst stretch 
that they've been in on all season. It's the worst record that they've had over the last 10 games. They Since the All-Star break, they just have not looked like a team that you can sit here and say, yeah, I have total confidence and faith that not only are they going to win the Stanley Cup, at this point I'm struggling to say they have the ability to safely win a playoff series. And I say this because even though it's not the same players in the lineup, if you take this year's roster and you take last year's roster, what are the real differences there? I mean, same goaltender. It's going to be a similar situation. Your depth, if they can score, if they aren't all, if they don't tap tap themselves out on goals, you can get a few extra goals here and there. But your top guys are going to have to score. And if your top guys are playing 45 minutes a night, they're just not going to have the legs to continue to do this. Like, are we just sitting in a deja vu position? Am I now instead of worrying about how uh, I can't even think of anybody off of last year's team, but now I'm going to have to watch Ryan Johansson at second line center try and do this for this team. And I know that we said that he's going to be gone by the trade deadline. But who are, I, how is this going to change? And look, look, I, I think it's it's very easy to be like, you know what, we lost two straight, and, and obviously going into tonight, as we're recording this, they could possibly lose tonight as well to Dallas. But you have you're only four ga- points out of first place in your conference or division, excuse me, right? You're only four game points. That's two games. Two games, okay, everybody? You're one of the worst kids you've had all season. You've lost to some bad teams, but you've also – and, like, this this team gets up for good teams, apparently. That's, that, that's what they've done. They get up for games against Dallas. They don't get up for games against Calgary. That's the, that's the unfortunate part. I am not fucking here going to sit here, and, and I know you're going to bring this up. I'm not going to sit here in time to fucking jump ship on your big stars is all I'm going to say, okay? You can you make mean the adjust- people that are saying trade Miko Rantanen? The, the, those those fans need to go pick up another sport because you you I, I, you're gonna I, trade a guy who had 55 goals last season. That's yeah. smart. And me, look, Miko has not played well, right? And that's because of who he's playing with. Let's not forget that that, that the line's ever changing, right? You get Val back, and I'm very very happy that he that he got through what he needed to, and that he's healthy and he's back to full strength because Val was on a tear before he left, and now a help a, a stronger health and, and a healthier mind for Val. That's even scarier. He is going to be one of your best point scorers on the team. That is adding a fucking gold, golden fucking spoon to your team already. Okay. So the worst part about this team still is 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 it's is hot and cold streaks, right? Is is the kid is still one of the best players on planet Earth, but it's what you're getting from the other guy, the other the other four lines um, on the basis that you're like, fuck, what am I? Who am I going to get tonight? That's the worst part. It really is. And adding a foul back is huge. But like I said, Joe and look, Joe McFarland and Joe and McFarland are not going to sit there on their hands. Plan they They're can't. Not going here. They can't. They can't. This is the year where the if it is the same exact thing or something similar that happened last year, Chris McFarland is now buddy. We were all sunshine and rainbows when you took that job because Joe Sagan just won his Smither Cup. If you don't take care of business this year, I'm gonna fucking slash your tires. I'm gonna it's slash your tires. Joe, Joe, Joe will step. Right obviously, back it's. It, yeah, Joe will step back in. I'm not act- advocating for any of this, but that's where, like, you were handed the keys to a Ferrari. You have Nathan McKinnon. Okay, the issue has been you don't have Landis Cog. I get that, but you you should, you knew you weren't going to have Landis Cog, and you didn't take advantage of LTIR, and you didn't get anybody last year, and he's skating again this year. But honestly. I, it's it, look, it's it, look. I, I it's a great it's a great uh, comparison to, to how I was feeling with Jamal Murray when when he was out. Right, it was like fuck. We're such a good team. This is Nikola Jokic. This is fucking Michael Porter Jr. Aaron Gordon. These these guys are all sort of level players. Want some of the best players in the world. Fucking figure it out, right? Figure it out, figure it out, figure it out. And I'm not saying because look, I think Jamal Murray his impact is a little bit more than Landis Cog on the Avs, but it's still it's still like the guy that that that, that runs the locker. Plain and simple, and Jamal Murray is the guy who runs your offense. It's 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 just that set that tone, and obviously they've been missing that. And I don't I don't know if that means that if Lance Cog still is badly injured, that you have to give McKinnon the C. But it just seems as though that, that that they're still looking. All those all those depth guys just have no one to, to keep them accountable, right? McKinnon can keep them accountable, but it's the A on the chest. And 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 say 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 what you want. The fact that it's only an A. It, it, it means something. There's a reason why Crosby was given the fucking keys of the fucking ship at, at 20 years or 21 years old in, in, in Pittsburgh. There's a reason why Ovechkin got the keys of the ship, right? Because they were fucking leaders and they knew if they didn't have a fucking leader on the ice. 
and they didn't have that C in the ice, it was like, you know what, who do I go to? Because I think that the, some of the role players are being like, you know what, do I go to Kale here or do I go to Mac here? And that's the worst part about it is you don't have an absolute number one leader. And McKinnon is absolutely a leader. I'm not denying he his is. leadership I, at all. I don't think but that he should. Do you think he should actually have a C? I don't think he should have a C. I, I I don't know if he should, but either way, I it's 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 tough when you guys walk in the locker room and you don't have a C on the ice, right? It, like I said, that's 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 the difference between this team in the last two years or two years ago, whenever it was. Um, all those guys knew where the leadership was. When you the guys like Ross Colton, guys guys like Ryan Johansson, guys uh, um, uh, McDermott, a couple like George Ev, all these guys have never played with Lance Cog. Never played with the C on the ice. That leadership is a little bit in question, and and and, and it's and it's a it's a who do you feed the horse to, right? So I look, I, I have zero doubts about this team. I'm I am not ready to jump ship. Still, I no, I, I have zero. Not doubts. jump ship, but like, don't Jimmy, you see the comparisons last year? I do see the don't comparisons, but we I do see the comparisons, but you still have two of the. You still have an X factor that some of these other teams don't have. Is you have one of the best forwards, you have one of the best defensemen in the game on your team. Still, it is whether it is not whether or not they can do that, be be as good as they are, because you know what you're gonna get out of them. It's whether or not everyone else can step it up, and that's where my biggest if is, because I know twenty nine and eight are gonna fucking show up when when the lights hit. Plain and simple. I don't know yeah. if everyone it else be, is going to. It would be nice if eight will show up at some point here consistently, because he's he's been a part of this issue. Sam Girard has been the best defenseman for the abs, most consistent defenseman for the abs over this little stretch, which is, I think why they're losing. Um, having, here's the th crazy thing. If, if I were to tell you this in, in any other circumstance, I think you'd look at me like I was crazy, but did you realize that the avalanche are well above 500 without either McKinnon or McCarr in the lineup yet under 500 without big Val? He's the only player that they actually have a losing record when he's not on the ice. So if I, I'm not saying that I don't see this team being successful. And honestly, I think that the entire NHL this year looks pretty down. It, yes. it looks pretty dog shit. Everybody can score whenever they want. I think we're going to see another high high goals postseason. Anybody can get hot at the right time. And, and the year that they won the cup, they sucked at the end of the season. They It was a different team, but they had sucked at the end of the season. So I'm not sitting here and I'm not saying that there's absolutely no chance. But – thinking about it and the more that I think about it and the more that I see all of those things that I knew were going to be issues last year and they're not fixed and they're the same exact thing that I have to deal with. It's tough. It's tough for me to sit here and be excited for the playoffs. No, I, look, I, 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 I will still be excited to see this team perform. And like I said, I, th there are stretches in the season where you're like, what the fuck? But it, it is not, it is not time to just f start trading players, star players away. Like some, do we fire Bednar? That's another thing I've been that hearing. Is too. One, that is another one of the stupidest things I've ever heard either too. So look, I, I, if you are ready to fire Bednar, ready to fucking trade Mika Ranson, like I said, go find a new fan base to fucking join. Go. You're probably a Broncos fan too. That believes in Myrtle, Russell Wilson still. So, oh, I, 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 so so you better better figure it out. But I look I, I have zero doubts with the scene. And Matt like Duchesne was yeah, your favorite yeah. Avalanche player before. And you and you you have a chance tonight as recording this to beat the stars to get within two points of the fucking division lead. Okay? Let's not forget that. So still it's still your division going through you. Okay. Let's not let's look, you have to make adjustments if you want to win the cup. That's there's zero doubt about that. But I'm not going to sit here and act like and act like it's time to fucking blow it up because we are nowhere near that. I, I never, yeah. I'm not it, saying you. No, I'm, I'm not saying you. I'm saying and the and fucking and panels. This is, just to say that. this is the bad thing. I was going to try and come on the five hole show for the Variety Sports Network on Monday, and I was going to mention this because they're a little bit more of a. I mean, they have more people that listen because it's it's more people from more places. But the fact that I had to sit through all weekend of listening to Denver sports, and that's what I heard. I heard Miko needs to get traded because he won't shoot and he won't generate offense. Miko's never generated offense in his entire career. He sits at the circle. He's an Alex Ovechkin. He sits at the circle as a winger and he snipes. That's it. That's all you pay the moose to do. So I don't need him generating offense and I don't need him really crashing the net. And I don't need you telling me I was that person. I've been there before. I was calling for Bednar's head when they couldn't beat the stars, when they couldn't beat the sharks. I've changed my tune completely because he's gotten the best out of this team. And you don't get your message stale over three seasons of being good, of being good, but struggling. 
I, I hate the fact – like, you can make that argument when a coach has been there for 10 years and they haven't done anything, i.e. Pittsburgh, with Mike Sullivan. I think it's time that you maybe that, – that message has gone stale. Jared Bednar's message has not gone stale in that dressing room. And, and look, he has gotten the most out of some bad lineups. Let's not forget the, the people that he's thrown out there with still being one of the best teams of hockey. Like, look, he deserves a lot of credit just we, for being there during the bad years. We have such high expectations for this team. That's why we were even having this conversation right now. Because we are still better than two-thirds of the, the teams in fucking the NHL. We're still better than two-thirds of the NHL right now. And, and Bednar has won a cup. So I forget. He's won. He's won. And, and he, we are still better than ha- more than half the teams in this league. So calm down, everybody. Especially 104 and 3, because your takes are ridiculous. Like, like, it, it, like it, everyone needs to calm down. This team will figure it out. And if it doesn't, then things will change. But right now, I, I, I look, there's very, very few few teams in, in the NHL right now. If you took the top fuck, uh, your left wiener when you're in your captain out of the lineup, that they'd be as good as the Avs are right now. It lasts two years, right? You take your top left winger away from your team and your guy who wears your senior chest, senior his chest, away from your team for two years. And how many teams are as good as he has right now? And yeah, it sucks because we have these high expectations, Jimmy. I want to win a cup. You want to win. It's plain and simple. And that's the expectations you should have because you're that good. But I'm not going to sit here and say that, that this isn't fixable mm. and that you needed to fucking blow everything up because you shouldn't. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's move on. Talk about the NBA and the Denver Nuggets. Um, Jason Tatum should be the NBA MVP, Nico. It's that's now the new the propaganda. It's good because I've been teaching propaganda at the end of World War One. The ESPN propaganda, and they sent out the big dogs. They sent out Stephen A. Smith, and unfortunately, the only issue that they made, the only mistake that they made, was they sent him up against Shannon Sharp, who you know is going to stand up, and, and he stood on business for Denver, and he made sure to back him down, and he even got. Like Stephen A., I don't know how you can't say Jason Tatum. He's the best player on the best team with the best record in the NBA. Yeah, but what are you going to tell me about 18, 12, and, and 36? I know, I know, I know, I know. What, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I just got to be basically admitted. I just got to make something interesting. I got to make something up so people will continue to watch. Look, look, at the end of the year, Nicole Jokic will be a three-time MVP. And, and it is wild saying that as a Denver Nuggets fan that we will have a three-time MVP on our team that has brought a championship to this roster. But he is the best player on earth. He is averaging 32, 16, and 16 over three games. Hold on, let me let me let me let me say that again. 32, six, 32 points, 16 rebounds, 16 assists as a seven foot center. You know how difficult that is. And, and look, it's it, it look 70 points. Uh, I saw people sit, people all, all the fucking Philly fans or whatever being like, What has Jokic scored 70 points? I what is what is it? Beats got over 10 assists. Like, what is the average? This is what he's done. Like, look, look, Jokic plays winning basketball. This is what winning basketball looks like to you. And look, people are realizing. I've seen it. It's Colin Cowers in the world. The the the, the, the uh, Matt Matt whatever I forgot his name from the, the from the Athletic. They're all realizing this is a fucking dynasty ready to roll. We are we are handling teams, Jimmy. I don't know if you, you, you've realized. Uh, no, the, the we Warriors we have, game the other night really solidified themselves. We have won. 10 straight games against the Golden State Warriors and the Los Angeles Lakers. 10 straight games between those two teams. The two teams that have won the, the championship outside yourselves most recently in the Western Conference. You have beat them 10 times in a row. Let's, let's not forget about that. And, and, and look, I – it is it is wild to me. It is absolutely wild to me that that, that we are in a world where, where this is possible. But like like I there is this is the perfectly molded top five. It is the perfectly molded coach for this team, and, and it is the most unselfish team in basketball. We have people on Twitter going saying, "Okay, some absolutely has to do something about this team." They already did. They took away Bruce Brown, and we're still this good. Look, we don't care about the one seed. Okay, that that's cute and all. We don't care about the one seed. It is important right now to play your best basketball when you are, because right now between the number one seed and I believe the eight seed, there's a six and a half game difference. Six and a half game difference. That is that is. Three nights, three games, where where where, where a, a eight seed could be hosting a playoff series, right? It is that close, and the difference between first seed and second seed in the East is six and a half, which is absolutely crazy to think about. But like I said, you're playing best basketball, and right now this this stretch of games, as you're as you're listening to this Thursday, we'll be playing the Heat 
Let's stretch your games where we play Golden State. We play Sacramento on Wednesday night. We play Miami on, on, on Thursday. We, we play the Lakers on Sunday. We play, I believe it's Phoenix on Tuesday again next week. It is a, one of the toughest stretches the whole season. One of the toughest stretches the whole season. You can get to a point where you only you are more above 500 those games. You can you can sit back and go play fucking Detroit and Washington at the end of the season and, and whoop up on some bad teams to get the get the confidence you can. Because let's not forget that Nuggets have one of the easiest easiest schedules left in a league. It seems because they have only one one back to back left, and it is Wednesday and Thursday night. That's wild to think about. Only one back to back left the whole rest of the season, and it's Wednesday and Thursday night, and then after that. You play a bunch of a bunch of mid-level teams. It is not the high-level Kings, Warriors, Thunder, um, Clippers. It is not that. It is it is the likes of the Grizzlies. It's the likes of the War, the Wizards. It's the likes of uh, of the Pistons. It's these bad teams that you can just whoop up on and get some momentum for. So. Like I said, I, I I am very very intrigued to see what this this stretch of games comes down to, because the last three games it, it looked like this team just t- went into championship mode. It really did. And and my my dad has always said, and the heat this is the heat motto back when LeBron was playing with the Heat Heatles. And um, there's three seasons. There's before the All Star break. There's after the All Star break. Then there's post All Star break. After the All Star break, break, before the All Star break, you're getting your footing. Right, you're getting your footing, seeing where you are, seeing how you test up against the other teams. After the All Star break, we we want out the contenders from the pretenders. Now, obviously, the postseason is where we where we find out who who really is the fucking man. Plain and simple. And 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 right now with this post All Star break start, where you beat up on two bad teams very handily, and then you go into Golden State and you beat them again on their home court with a fully healthy team, you are proving that the West Being still runs through. Yeah, and you and you beat you pr- you prove again why you are the team to beat still in the Western Conference. No matter the Clippers, no matter the Thunder, no matter the Kings, the Warriors, the Lakers, doesn't matter. The the West still runs through five thousand two hundred eighty feet. It was it's a moment where you see the switch flip because Golden State did everything they could to come out like that was a hungry team. They're trying to fight for playoff positioning, playoff seating. They're trying to Clay fight Thompson. mentally. They're Clay just Thompson trying to get over that. Yeah, they're just trying to get over that mental hurdle that the Nuggets pose now. It's fun. It's fun to be on the other side of this okay. because we used to talk about teams like eh, mentally, we just got to make sure, like, we got to get the monkey off our back. Now that's the Denver Nuggets with all these other teams. Like, winner, I don't want to play. I see Jokic in my sleep. He's dropping 30 foot dimes from the other side of the floor, and I, I can't stop him, and I don't know what to do. It's, it's so funny because Jokic makes teams just feel helpless. That, that, that's the fun part, right? He, he, he's not dunking over your seven footer. He's not one Manyama reaching over eight, eight footers. Like he, 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 he comes in and he's like, okay, I need to beat you like this. Done. Thank you very much. Let me go back to my horses. Let me go home. So, uh, go, go to my beautiful wife, my beautiful daughter. And, and then go play my, my uh, league of legends on my phone. And then we move on. And people were disgusted. People were disgusted because this motherfucker is, is this good at basketball. And, and like, look, he cares. He absolutely cares. There's zero to nine. He doesn't, he, he, that, he that he cares. Cause he, he loves the game. He, he, he is a, he's one of the masterminds of the core and how, and how to decipher defenses. But the man <laughs> does this because he's fucking good at it. He 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 wants to go live back in Sambor, Serbia, with his family, and after all, he makes all this money and and just just live off the grid. Okay, and that's how I want to be. Is, is I want I want to be more like him when I grew up, plain and simple. So I, I look. It is it is it is I, it is crazy watching this man every night. And like I said, I, I, I'll keep saying this. I will never take this man for granted. I will never because there's going to come to a point where I I will be watching Devin Nuggets games and he will not be he will not be on the team. He will he the number will be in the drafters and I'll be staring at the trophy the trophy banner. I'll be staring at the 15 and the banners with Jokic above it to make sure that's very clear and 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 and, and just reminiscing on the good old days because we don't know if we'll ever get this again. We we don't know. We have no. No fucking clue if you'll ever get this again. And so, so like I said, if you're a Nuggets fan, if you're a basketball fan, this is the next bet, the great big man. It went from it went from Wilt to Kareem, Kareem to uh, 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 Elijah Wan, Elijah Wan to Shaq, Shaq to you could possibly say Dwight, Dwight, or D- Dwight to Jokic. That's where we are at, and and it's time to relish in the greatness. 
just for the other history buffs out there, it's a good thing that Jokic is from Sambor, Serbia, not Sarajevo, Serbia, because if he was from Sarajevo, he would he would be not as good of a shooter. He'd miss a lot initially, and until he finally hits his mark, then then he's going to start a world war. Um, let's get the champs. How was the champ series? I know that it didn't go. I watched a little bit of it. It's um, an interesting style because it's played in the sixes format. If I was paying attention to the on-screen interview correctly. And it's going to be the format that they're taking up in the Olympics. So this, it's coming up in this Olympic cycle. It'll be competed for, and uh, it'll be in this sixes format. But what did you see? How was it different than the normal season with all the setup and everything? You made the ESPN broadcast on one of the games where you're celebrating one of your dudes. But uh, overall, what was the experience of the champ series and how was being back with the PLL and the California Redwoods? <laughs> Yeah, look, it, it's funny saying that California that I'm that I'm I, I, that I that I represent the California team with how much crap I've said about the other California teams, but that's where I am. And look, I love my team. I love and I look, I I I love getting the opportunity to work with our coaching staff, work with our players. Obviously, unfortunately, our head coach, Coach Nat, coaches a college team, Ohio Northern, right now, so he's in season right now, so he wasn't able to be with us. I was with one of the greatest lacrosse players of all time, John Grant Jr., and obviously Chris Collins was our head coach, and CC is one of the nicest, one of the best defensive mind, mind head coaches in the league, in, in the world of cross today. And being with them and being with our team, which is obviously, look, our team was – Team was one of the favorites to win it, right? Our team was one of the favorites. You had you had the um, MVP from last year, quote unquote, the Golden Stick guy from Omar Dennis on your team. You had uh, you had a lot of promise. You had a lot of speed in Kyle Montgomery, Jules Henningberg, uh, a, lot, a lot of dudes with an absolute incredible skill set, absolutely incredible skill set. And unfortunately, unfortunately, we we hit the injury bug. And, and like I said, one thing about sixes. It's basketball. It's it's basketball. It's up, down, up, down, up, down. But it's the same contact. It's the same. It's the same speed as the normal game, right? It's, it's that sorry, not the same speed, same size and same 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 skill as the normal game. But with that speed level taken to another notch. It's mm-hmm. basketball, hockey, um, and and I want to say it's basketball. similar to like rugby yeah. sevens too. Yeah, it's bas- there's you can watch rugby fifteens oh, yeah. and it's a violent game, but rugby sevens is just fast. Like fast, there's no oh, no. no stopping. And look, we we had some guys on our team. Ricky Miazon. Look, if you don't know the story, of Ricky Miazon, you you need to look it up. It's the guy was a four year uh, four year guy at Stanford, middle linebacker, starter from, for, and he was the number one recruit coming out of number one recruit uh, coming out of high school for the cross. No more recruit coming out of high school for lacrosse um, in, in his year, and he said, ah, I think I'm going to go play football at Stanford for four years. He transferred to Virginia in his grad transfer year, uh, played college across for one year, and now he's available to play in the PLL. He played for us, and look, he was an absolute animal. Ricky is one of the nicest guys, too, and and I, I'm excited to continue working with him, hopefully um, during the summer, if, if he just decides to play lacrosse instead of playing football or going to the draft. So he got injured. That was unfortunate, but – Man, we, we we had some dogs. We had some dogs. Congrats, uh, congrats to the Cannons. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm sad that that we didn't win, um, but they had a good team. And and and, and look, that game, that this series come came down to two things: it, the healthiest and the most talented team was was going to win. And there was zero doubting the talent, right? The Water Dogs are very talented. The Cannons are very talented. We were very talented. The Archers, unfortunately, had a lot of guys that played play box so they, they didn't have their normal roster but they're still very very talented and at the end the cannons were healthy and they're good and, and and having that overtime game winner um in a championship game was unreal too so um it was a hell of an experience it was fun because it's it's an entirely different pace right it's entirely different pace it was it was like playing basketball again and watching hockey lines go in and out of the box i didn't realize that was how was it how it was going to be until i turned it on and and the that was probably the best way to do it because if I'm a casual sports fan and I didn't realize I was turning on the cross, if I happen to turn on the TV and the last thing that I had on was ESPN and that's what sh- jumps on my screen. I'm like, I'm sitting down and watching this. Holy. It, 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 it's, it's, and look that, like I said, that's going to be the Olympic style. Obviously no two pointer. That's good. That's the only difference, but Sixes, short field, up and down. It's what's it's what's going to be in 2028 in LA. So, and, and, and look, it's, it's unfortunate that, that, Obviously, we played we played the championship series during 
the NLL season because the box game because this is a game the game is a hybrid of the box and and outdoor game that's what they're that's what they're hoping for with the speed of it so and showing it on the Olympic stage and obviously all those Canadians that are incredible at box as can as that as that is obvious and that is the national sport the cross is the national sport there a lot of guys play box across there and having them play the box type game in sixes would have been awesome to see but obviously a lot of those guys are still in season so we'll see how how that changes um, going forward see how see how that affects the game affects the indoor game affects the outdoor game because Teams are going to be more wary, or guys will be more wary of how they need to play if they want to be on that roster in 28. I'm excited to see how it's going to progress. It was really fun, and and it was cool to see you back out there. And and obviously, uh, you're you're going to be spending more time as the season gets closer and closer to um, getting started here. But I think that's going to do it for this episode, episode 172 of the Far End of the Bench podcast. Able to talk a little bit about the offseason needs and wants of the teams and, and plenty of other things. So, Glad you were able to be here with us. Glad we're back. No more need for that little bit of a break post Super Bowl. It's time. We're back hitting the ground running. We'll sleep in what we say July because July wow. has absolutely nothing actually going on except, except you're going to be during and yeah in the right in the middle of cross season. <laughs> Um, yeah, we don't need to talk. About, I'm, I'm not talking about baseball. Did you see the uniforms? Have you seen the uniforms? Oh Tell God, me you've seen the know. uniforms. Oh, oh, I've seen the uniforms. I can't oh, put the uni- I can't put the, the pictures up on the screen because if you <laughs> may or may not be watching, oh, oh, but if you're interested, Look, oh, if you, if you don't are, skimp oh. on the material of your pants. I'm just gonna say it that way. Don't <laughs> skimp on that, and and your imagination can take you wherever you want to go. The MLB has. Uh, they're either becoming Magic Mike on dirt, or they somebody royally screwed up somewhere down the line, and they're like, "Oops." I, I- I don't know how you how you put those jerseys on just as a test on me, right? It's just say, try this on for me, and be like, "Huh, I can see your fucking your excuse my language, your nuts hanging out uh, as you bend over, and, and oh, the jersey." Oh yeah, I can see your nipples, and and the letters on the back are like half the size. Hey, that's good, everybody. Let's run it through. Let's Let's roll with it. Let's roll. Doctor Evil, I've always known you're crazy, but now I can say you're nuts. I like you. Baseball's wild. Um, yeah, I don't even know how we got onto that. Follow at FEOTB Pod. Be sure to check out the Variety Sports Network. Follow them at Variety underscore Sports underscore. Be on the lookout. There's uh great network shows all throughout the rest of the regular season. Um, be sure to check out those guys and continue to follow, support our show. We appreciate everybody checking us out. Episode 172, Far End of the Bench podcast for myself, Jimmy Pilato, my co-host, Nico Bryant. Thank you guys for tuning in. We will see you next week. Peace. If you don't stay down and you never quit, come on over here and sit.